Okay, this is the recording for the data instruction lab. This would be activity two. We were able to do activity one, and I'm on page 285. Uh, actually, not on 285. Uh, I'm on, uh, we did the activity one for the logic pro. Uh, we couldn't do that on Alan Bradley because of all the mo modules that were required. Uh, we tried to do activity two in class, which is on page uh, 282. Uh, we tried to do it with the Logic Pro software, which is on page uh, 286. Now, when we turn this in, we can turn in page 286. It's just that not, we're not going to do it in the Logic Pro software. We're going to use the actual Logic, uh, the actual Allen Bradley software. Uh, the problem we have is that we're supposed to use a, a uh, we're supposed to use a, a last in first out uh, stack, uh, but the problem is when we come up here and use the last in first out stack. So all I'm going to do is just come up here and bring in the uh, the uh, last in first out instruction if I can find it real quick. Uh, yeah, so this is it. We're supposed to use a, a lipo stack. Uh, but when I bring it in right here and tell it where I want to get the information from, it doesn't make any difference where I want to get the information, where the source of my information is. Uh, automatically, uh, it's going to come up in, uh, let's go ahead and do this too. What we're supposed to do is we're supposed to use a counter. And I'll just go ahead real quick and put the counter in there. And if you were in class, you saw uh, the problem, the problem, uh, that we had uh, here, though, uh, I'll show y'all uh, the actual problem here. Uh, and we won't even put, I won't even put a control element in there because I'm trying to show you why, why this won't work with the uh, tasks that we have. Uh, so we use an up counter. And then uh, what we're supposed to do, I uh, put it in wrong, it's wrong. Let's let us move it right there. And then we'll delete this wrong. Uh, I'm going to use an up counter. Yes, it did it again. Uh, well, we'll call this counter uh, 5 colon 0. And then when I go into my preset, we're going to preset it for 7. But when I go into my source for my last in first out, uh, and and I try to put uh, C5, uh, C5 colon, uh, colon, uh, colon zero, colon zero accumulator. Uh, what, uh, what Logic Pro does is it automatically puts index address in there. So the problem is it's going to try to index through the accumulator on counter two and there's no indexing through the accumulator on counter two. Uh, when I come up here and actually look at the uh, RS Logic, the Logic, uh, the uh, RS Logic 500 software, not Logic Pro uh, software, and I'm gonna put this up on my camera because I got it on another computer. And sorry, this is. Uh, it says that uh, the last in first out source is supposed to use an address mode that I define. So here in their example, they are using uh, they are using direct addressing. So the problem is with direct addressing, I can get it from a point and put it into a stack, and we're going to get it from the uh, from the counter. Uh, but with RS Logic, it tries to automatically use indexed addressing, and it will not let me specify another address mode. So that's the reason why we're going to have to do activity two, and we'll look at activity three. Uh, to see where we'll have to do that at. So what we're going to do is we're going to do, do activity two in the data handling instruction. Uh, we're going to do it, which would be lab, I can't remember, 12, I think. Uh, we'll do that with the actual logic Pro. So what I have is uh, I have at home, this is my computer room at home. Uh, I've got a MicroLogic 1100, okay. And, uh, of course, it's got data switches. I had to cover up this light with a piece of tape because it's so dang bright. Uh, we have, uh, on this uh, RH Logic 1100, we have 10 inputs. So that would take us 8, 9, 10. It would take us through all the way up through 
a uh, bit uh, so four five it take us all the way up through bit uh zero through at seven it take us all the way up through bit nine uh if I can get my panel up here. And then if we need to output on this guy, we've got all these outputs right here, and we could wire up to these outputs. Uh, but what's nice is it actually also supports the light. So when an output is true, it supports the light, but I don't think we're going to send this by here. So this is why we're doing this lab on, uh, on the RS Logics uh, 500 instead of on Logic Boat. So here's our RS Logic uh, 500, and we're going to do Activity 2 in the data handling instruction. And so we'll come up here and we'll create a new file. And of course, the first thing we need to do is select our processor, our type PLC. And we're using an RS Logic 1000 Series B. So here we are right here. And I've already set the communication up with the thing. Uh, I ran RS links. And then when I look and see who's active, it says the PLC is active, so we're okay. Uh, so uh, the first thing we're going to do is, uh, so let's do it. Let's stop again. Uh, so let's go up there and do that again. Because that's what I should have done first. Uh, so I've done that first. Uh, so we're going to use the RS Logic 11000B. This is us. And now we're ready to come in and uh, write our program. <laughs> Uh, so first thing it says that we need to do in data handling, it says step one is uh, in activity two, it says we're going to uh, create a stack with a length of seven. The accumulator value of the counter number one is used to uh, use for the data that we're writing on the stack. Uh, the output module four, okay, so this is right. So output module four is used for the destination. Uh, we can't use output module 4, so we're going to get our uh, input module 4. We're not going to do uh, 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 the input module. We're going to get that from our counter. But the input module on our RS, on our uh, uh, Allen Bradley, is input. It's going to be uh, uh, output uh, 0. It's going to be output uh, output 0. And make sure we place a master reset program and draw the relay log. So we're going to do the PLC logic. So we'll start off uh, with our uh, with our master start stop station. Okay. So we'll put uh, uh, three in here, and we're going to do a master start stop station. So what we'll do uh, is that we'll use uh, inputs uh, uh, eight and nine. Uh, we'll use that as our inputs. Uh, and then we're going to put a, a bit file here. Uh, and then we'll come up here and we'll put our down drop. We'll pull one of our guys in here. Oh, we've got to do it down at the bottom. So. Uh, then we'll put a seal in circuit. And then uh, this is where we'll go. So here we're going to use this as our input. And so we're going to come up here. And use input uh, colon zero slash eight. And we're going to call this our start. And then over here, we're going to use input uh, zero slash nine. And we'll call this our stop. And then down right here, we're going to use one of our bit files. We're going to use bit. Uh, Bit three uh, colon zero slash zero. Okay, and we'll call this reset. Okay, and then we're going to come up here and we're going to use reset. Okay, so this takes care of our master start stop. Okay. Make sure we don't have any errors in that. It looks okay. Then we'll go ahead and uh, put our master reset in here. Uh, so we're going to reset our counter. If we reset our counter, we're going to reset our stack. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and put a normally closed contact here. So when I hit my stop button, that's going to clear us out. And so here we're going to use reset. Okay. Uh, then we're going to come over here and put our counter. We're going to put a up counter. 
And we're not going to, we're going to use, use counter five colon zero is the one we're going to use. Uh, and we'll call this count it. And we're going to preset this to seven because we're going to uh, go, uh, we're just going to output that, the status of the counter. So we'll count from uh, one to seven. Okay. Uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to come down here and insert another row. And I'll just break up my instructions because this will be a little faster. So we're going to insert another rung, okay, right here. And then we're going to come in, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to load this thing every time our counter is enabled. Uh, so I'll come down here and I'll put a normally open contact. Okay. And then we'll use uh, C5 colon 0. Uh, slash enabled. Okay. All right. So every time this guy's enabled, it's going to automatically load that. Uh, then we're going to use the last in uh, first out load. And our source is going to be C5 colon zero dot accumulator. Okay. So notice here it did not use index address unlike it did on our. Uh, on our uh, on our logic pro uh, we'll put our stack out in b10 because i'm using b0 up there we'll put our uh, b10 uh zero and then we'll call this uh, our lipo okay so notice it automatically used index addressing our control register uh, we're going to use is we'll use uh, R, we're not using R6, so the, uh, we're going to use R60. Okay. And then our length will be 7. And we'll start off in position 1. So this should go out and we should, we should fill our stack up, right? Uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to pull the information off our stack. And then we're going to use that. Uh, to uh, send to an output port. Okay. So we're going to come up here and put in a, another row. And here to send it to our output so we can watch this respond, uh, what we'll do is we'll just use a normally one of our normally open, and here we'll use input zero slash zero. And we'll call this our uh, unload. So let's go to edit symbol. And then lipo. And then we'll just put you in on this back. Okay, we'll take it. So we'll go to the address and symbols. And then we're trying to do the input zero and we'll call it lipo. Unload. Yeah, so we don't like that. So we'll call it, uh, we'll just call it unload. And that's, that's why I didn't take it. So here it should work okay. Okay. So uh, we entered it directly in our symbol table. Okay. So what we're going to do with this one, every time I hit the switch, uh, we're going to come up and unload this thing. So we're going to use our last in first type unload. Okay. And where's our LIFO at? It's in B10 colon 0. Uh, destination where we're going to put this at. We're going to put this in output. Zero, okay, dot zero, zero rich, okay. And so this is our output. Okay, 
Uh, then what we're going to do is we're our control is go, got to use another control register. We're going to use R61 is available. Okay. And then our length, we're going to use seven. Okay. And then so this should be our program. Uh, we'll come up here and we'll check it for errors. And it says it don't like something right here. It says it don't like this symbol right here. So let's go back and change it to uh, uh, DU. So I won't have to go back and edit the symbol. We'll go ahead and get this. Okay, let's see. If this clears it up. Okay, so there is no count enabled. Uh, that is a count up. So every time we count up, uh, it should take the count and put it into our stack. And then we should come up here and pull this off. Uh, and then we're going to send this to our output. Uh, and then this right here should reset the counter. Okay. Uh, so when I automatically hit my stop button, it's going to reset the counter. Uh, so we'll go ahead and we will download this and we're going to call this uh, lab 12 okay, which is what it is on your lab assignment to you and then we'll come up here and save it okay, you don't have me okay so I don't have permission to put it on my uh, so we'll come up here and I'll put it on my desktop. And I think if I don't have one, advanced PLCs, I'll put it in. Okay. And then RS Logix. And let's save it. I'm going to download the program. We're going to switch to run mode. So hopefully, what should happen here, we'll go online. Right now it's waiting on me. So hopefully when we do this, uh, we'll load it and then I'll bring, I'll, I'll go sequence it through one time and then we'll come back and, uh, and do this. Uh, so we'll come up here and uh, we've got, got to energize my stop button, right? Uh, so my stop button is the switch nine. Okay. So we should be ready to roll, okay? So my counter's ready to roll, and we need to go offline. Uh, we didn't put what I wanted to count up in here, so we got to put a switch in here uh, so I can set my count. So let's go back offline. And then we've got a master reset here, okay? So what I need to do now is I need to, and this is not going to work. Okay, so I got, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and put another line up. I should have known that, guys. Let's see, are we offline? So we'll go to user, and then I'll put another run in here. Okay, and then I don't know what I was thinking about. And then I'll come up here. I know y'all like to make mistakes, need to make mistakes. So what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll take this guy. That's what I should have done first. We'll get rid of this guy, and then out here, what we'll do under our counters, uh, we'll put a reset. Okay. So we're going to reset uh, count five. Okay, which will be this guy. Okay. Uh, then what we'll do is here. What we want to do is we're going to count. So I'm going to go back to user. And then we'll drag a push button that we can go, or a button we can go through. And then here I'll use uh, input. Uh, I'm using input uh, zero. Uh, I'm using uh, zero down here to. Uh, I'm gonna use input zero slash one. And then we'll call it three. Okay. And let's check it for errors. So let's see what I put down here. Okay, so we're going to use uh, one, two, 
to uh, we're going to use zero to pull it out. We're going to use one for our count. Okay. So let's download it now. Error zone check. Okay. We'll download. We'll switch to one mode. Okay, go back to run mode. Yes, then what we'll do is we'll make this smaller so we can see everything happening. Uh, my start button's already, already enabled. So right now we should be resetting the counter. Uh, I'm going to come over here and hit uh, switch 8, which came in and sealed itself in. And now my counter's not cleared anymore. And then switch 1, we should be able to count. And then every time we count up, it should automatically load this. Okay, it did. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so we hit our, uh, we got a done on our lipo, right? Okay, we got a done on our counter. All right. So, uh, what we're going to do now, let's go out here and look at our B310 file. Uh, so, I'm trying to remember where you get to it here. And our status three, uh, B10 right here. Okay. And we see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's our stack where we pushed it on there. Right? See that? So we actually see it inside that B3 register now. And then what should happen is as we, as we come through this guy, uh, what should happen is this should send it out uh, to our output board. So what should happen is I, char I should my output one should go true, then output two, then output I mean output zero, one, and one and two, and we should see this happen. So uh, I'll come up here and show y'all this thing going through here. But what I want to do is bring my camera back up. And then show you all the output ports responding. So here's my camera. We'll go ahead and make it full screen. That's my arm. And then we'll come up here and look at our outputs. Uh, this camera doesn't want to sync in too well. Okay. And then we go through the sequence. Uh, with a switch one. Let's go back and double check that. So we go through the sequence. We're going to go through the sequence with, I'm sorry, switch zero. So switch zero is going to take us through the sequence. Okay. Let me go back to my camera. Okay. There we go. And then uh, put it back on full screen again. Okay, so I'm holding the camera in my hand, so y'all just have to be patient with me. Put it on full screen. Okay, now we're looking at our outputs. I'm going to get as steady as I can. And then we'll go through the sequence. I uh, made one little uh, small error, which I uh, noticed right off the bat, is that my outputs did not respond. Now, the problem is, is that this is a last in, first out, and we're setting our current position at zero. Uh, what you do to do on a last in, first out is you need to set your current position to the bottom of the stack, because this is last in, first out. Uh, so let me go back and do that, because it took 77 instead of uh, 7. So I'm going to put seven in there, okay. And then what's going to happen is it's it's going to go through the stack backwards. So let's make sure uh, we see this happen. So I'm going to hit switch zero, and then I'm going to re-put seven back in there. And what we should notice is that it starts off with seven, and then it goes to six, then it goes to five, five, four, three, 
to uh, one, and then it should go to zero. Okay, let's see, y'all see that? You know, it takes a little while for it to update. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and change this back to seven, and then I'm going to put my camera up there. But remember, the last thing that we put on the stack was a seven. So when we look at our outputs, the first thing we should see on our outputs is we should see it, it goes seven. Remember, this is a last in, first out. The last thing we put on our stack was a seven. So the first out will be a seven. Then it'll go six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay. So I'm going to bring my camera back up now that I remember that. Like we always say, uh, just the little things, right? And it looks like I closed my camera out. So let me pause this again. So, okay, guys, I had to restart my camera application because it froze up on me. So what we should see when we go through our sequence, when I come over and hit input zero, we should go to our sequence, but since it's last in, first out, we're going to go through it backwards. So the first thing we should see is a seven. Right, so that would turn on the three outputs. Then we should see a binary six. That's a six, because this is zero. Zero, two, four, that's a six. Then we should see a five, so that's it zero and two, so that would be a five. This would be a four, that would be a three, that would be a two, and that would be a one. So the problem I had is that when I originally set up my LiPo stack, it gave me a default of zero, and I just kept it. So when you do the last in, first out, when you come back and set up your uh, your uh, your last, your actually what you go out and unload it or pop the stack, you're going to have to set it to seven. Okay, so you need to set that position to the end of the stack. And then when you do that, uh, you can go back in through the you can go back through the stack uh, the way it's supposed to be. So here I set it back to seven. Notice when I go through it. Now if I was looking at my outputs, we see it's going to pull off seven first. Then it's going to pull out six. Then it's going to pull out five. Then it's going to pull out four. Then it's going to pull out three. Then it's going to pull out two. And then it's going to pull out zero. So what we have to do. Is uh, and then what we would probably do is we would come up here and use this bit right here to reset it to what we had reset it to seven. Okay, all right, guys, that is lab 11. I'm not sorry, that's lab 12. A lab, lab 11 was already pre recorded. A lab 11, I mean, lab, lab 12 was the one that we just did. And then uh, what we'll do is we'll just drop lab 13. Uh, so lab 13 is not required. Uh, so these were two class labs. So we did the class 11. We did lab 11 in class. It's been recorded. So y'all that missed last Thursday can get credit for lab 11 by going and watching the YouTube video for the lecture that we had last week. It's going to be labeled data handling instruction. So all you have to do is go up there and just search for Rich Raymond, and then you'll see my picture should pop up, and then double click on that, and you'll be able to see all these lectures. All the lectures for this class will start off with ILT 198. Unfortunately, I don't have time to put the links in Blackboard. I will try to do that. Uh, and if I get that done, I'll post a message on, uh, on Blackboard, uh, but I'm grading labs and trying to get those up to date. So uh, you should see that pop up before the weekend's over, where I've graded the labs that were uh, that were turned in uh, in the to be graded uh, box in room 200, and then for yo that turned in uh, the in class lab on the sequencers that we did in class. But for y'all that was in class, like I explained, we I lost the recording for the sequencer lab, which is lab 14. So what I did is I went ahead and recorded that, it re-recorded it at home. Then I re-uploaded re uploaded those. For those that were absent last Thursday, you still have an opportunity to go out and complete lab 14. 
you have the opportunity to co uh, complete lab 11 and 12, and we're going to drop lab 13 uh, from this. Okay, I hope you all have a blessed day, and we'll see you all next week. Uh, guys, I know I con concluded that, but I thought I should go you go and show you how we could automatically load our last our uh, last in first out stack with zero, so we can reuse this over and over again. And then how we automatically load load our unload or our pop instruction with seven. So notice what I did in my master reset circuit up here at the top. What I've done is I put a move insert. So this resets my counter. Okay, so I've reset my counter. Okay, uh, this will automatically move seven into the position register, into the position uh, uh, the data file for uh, for R R one, which would be our uh, pull instruction, and then I'm moving zero into the position register for our push instruction. So that way, guys, you can automatically go up and do that. Uh, so if I go up here and start it, and we're using uh, uh, 8 for start, okay, and then what happens now, we can go in and we can load our counter in there, so that's what we're doing, which would be switch 1, okay, I'm sorry, yeah, this is our counter, and notice it increments our count in this, and notice it automatically put a 7 in here, so when I go to 0, it's going to pop the stack and now the outputs are doing just like it would before so what we can do now every time i hit my master reset which is uh hit the stop button up here uh then it's going to automatically load my push instruction with zero it's going to set its initial position at zero and it's going to set my uh, pull instructions initial position at seven and uh, also we could do this with a first in first out stack uh, we could come in and automatically initialize that so we could use it over and over and over again like we would do this. Now understand we're getting this, uh, our information we're putting on the stack from, uh, in, from the counter, but this could come from anywhere. We could use all three of our, uh, we could use our address modes. We could, uh, we wouldn't use index for, uh, our, if we use the same, if we used immediate, then we would push the same information on the stack and it would be a waste of, of two instructions when we could use a fill instruction to fill a group of memory locations. So normally what we do is we wouldn't use immediate address and what we do is with it we would use a direct address and we'd use indirect address and or we'd use indexed address and to go out and pull the information that we want to put on our stack. But since the counter does not change, the accumulator does not change, we don't want to use indexed addressing to get information out of our counter accumulator. And that was the problem with, with Logic Pro. It automatically put index for ind index addressing on the, on the source here. It would not let that. So it was trying to increment through the counter accumulator. And of course, after that, it just got messed up because uh, you know, the, the accumulator does not move. So that was, uh, I thought I went, would go ahead and do that. So I'll go ahead and pause this. And I think that's everything and go ahead and update, uh, update the lecture. Update the, uh, go, upload the, uh, the, uh,